Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about short and long-term memory. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about short-term and long-term memory. Psychologists separate short-term and long-term memory based on both capacity and duration, so both how much and how long. Let's talk about short-term memory first because it's actually a lot shorter than what you might think. Sometimes also called working memory, our short-term memory really only holds a memory for about 20 seconds. That means by the time I'm saying this, you've already had time to forget what happened back at the beginning of the video. Short-term memory also holds less than you think. Most people can only hold between five to nine things, but there is a kind of workaround that our brains use to shove in more information. After all, five to nine things isn't really that many. I mean, most of us have more digits in our phone number or letters in our name. If it's the right kind of information, our brain can group together pieces of information. So say here in the US, when we're trying to remember our social security number, we group together pieces of that information so that instead of having all nine slots full in our short-term memory, we might only have three to four slots full. You can even hear it in the way Americans say their social security number. Ba ba ba, ba ba, ba ba, ba ba. When we group information or compress information in this way, psychologists call it chunking because we chunk things together to make it take up less space. Long-term memory is really everything that you have in your memory that's not from the past 20 seconds or so. Our long-term memories are at the present point presumed to be both limitless in both duration and capacity. Because long-term memory is such a broad category, psychologists separate long-term memory into two big categories based on the types of behavioral tasks associated with that kind of memory. The first kind is implicit memory, but it's probably easier to think of as unconscious memory. These are the things you remember and then do without thinking. Implicit memories are then further divided into two subtypes, procedural memory and emotional memory. Emotional memory is exactly what it sounds like. You've learned to associate something emotional and now you don't have to stop and think when you see that stimulus presented. Do I have an emotional memory tied to that stimulus? You just sort of automatically have that emotional reaction. A lot of us have experienced this with taste aversion. Say you eat or drink something that makes you feel sick, the next time somebody tries to get you to eat that thing, you instantly get sick in your stomach. The other kind of implicit memory is called procedural memory, but colloquially, a lot of people would call it muscle memory. These are things like tying your shoes, riding a bike, dancing, really anything that you've had such repeated practice at, you don't have to actively engage your memory to remember how to do it. It's almost like your body just knows what it's supposed to do. The opposite of implicit memories are explicit memories, but not that kind of explicit. <laughs> this is explicit like really clear or detailed, like if I gave you explicit instructions. When we try to retrieve explicit memories, we have to actively think about them, things like facts or experiences that have happened to you. So while your driving skills would be an implicit long-term memory, actively trying to think about who taught you how to drive would be an explicit memory. And because this video seems to be turning into the video where we subdivide everything, explicit memory is also separated into three different types. The first is episodic. That's when we go back in our own lives to try to remember events that have happened to us, like a mental time travel or a wayback machine that shows us our own life. The second is declarative memory. That's your memory for facts. I declare that I remember many, many facts. The third type of explicit memory is called spatial memory, which is your memory for maps, navigation, or things like mazes. If you want to get started putting more things in your memory, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, 
keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.